Good morning, friends, and welcome to Worship at First Presbyterian Baker City. We are so grateful you could join us today, that you are here with us in spirit, in heart, in soul. We know that that connection that exists as we are one body in Christ cannot be severed, that we are always connected even during times when it may not feel that way. So we are glad that you are here with us as we come together to celebrate God, to uh, embrace this with our hearts, knowing that God is with us, knowing that God is with you, knowing that God is with those you love, as we join our hearts together. Let us just take a moment then to set aside all of those things which may be weighing on you, anything that would distract you from being present to God. We take that moment perhaps to light a candle, to turn our phones to don't disturb, whatever we need to do to be fully present to God and to one another. And as we come together as one another, I invite you to let people know you're here in the chat to talk to us, to let us know that, that you're here, that we might respond with you and we might connect. For we know that none of us want to go through this time alone. So let us know you're here. Let us bring our full self to God. Let us worship God. Good morning. The call to worship. In the beginning, God be began to create and it was good. Throughout history, God continued to create and is still at work in us and through us. God calls us to be active participants in God's ongoing creation. Come confessing our sins. My friends, not out of dread or fear, but trusting that God is faithful to forgive, let us bring all that weighs us down to God. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, you created us in your image. 
We are fearfully and wonderfully made, yet we turn from this image, believing we are too small, too ineffectual to make any difference in any way. It's the way we've always done it. Call us back to be to ourselves, Lord. Remind us of who you created us to be. Restore us to healthy relationships with you, with our neighbors, with ourselves, and with the world. Where we have gone astray, bring us back home. Where we have done wrong, correct us. While we have, where we have created injury, teach us to heal. Reconcile us, gracious God. The assurance of pardon. My friends, hear these good words. God knows, God knows what in your what's in your heart and on your mind. God does not condemn you. Do not condemn yourselves. In Jesus Christ, we are restored. In Jesus Christ, we are restored. Today I want to share a story with you. It's by a lady named Rachel Held Evans and Matthew Paul Turner. It's called What is God Like? And it goes like this. What is God like? That's a very big question. One that people from places all around the world have wondered about since the beginning of time. Well, nobody has seen all of God because God is far too big for any of us to see. We can know what God is like. God is like an eagle, sharp-eyed and swift, with wings so wide you can play under their shadow. God is like a river, constant and life-giving. When you grow up near God, You'll sprout up strong as a tree. God is like the stars, forever present and bright. Even when they feel far away, you can always look up and see them winking at you. God is like a shepherd, brave and good, a protector who loves her sheep so much that she watches over all of them and knows each of their names by heart. God is like a fort, strong and secure, with walls that are mighty and safe. Inside there are hidden places to hold you when you're scared or need a quiet place to rest. God is like a gardener, patient and nurturing. God plants, waters, weeds, and fertilizes the earth until every good thing on it seeks the nourish nourishing sun and grows. God is like the flame of a candle, warm and inviting. With God close by, you can look to the light and see through the darkest of nights. God is like the wind, passionate and full of mystery. God is both here and mysteriously also over there. God is everywhere, swirling throughout the world, whistling across mountain ranges, rustling through trees, and pressing against your cheeks on a breezy day. God is like an artist, creative and unpredictable, always busy making and remaking everything new.
God is like a mother, strong and safe. You can crawl up into her lap whenever you want to, and she will hold you until you fall asleep. God is like a father, gentle and safe. He will put you on top of his shoulders and give you a bird's eye view of all of creation. God is like three dancers, graceful and precise. They moved the same music in very different ways showcasing all of God's elegance and rhythm in your life. God is like a rainbow, vivid and full of color, a dazzling reminder of promise and hope for people after the storm. God is like a best friend, faithful and true, closer to you even your that e closer to you than even your brothers or sisters or siblings. And because we know what God is like, we know that. God is kind, God is forgiving, God is slow to get angry, God is quick to be glad, God is happy when you tell the truth and sad when things are unfair. She is your protector, he is trustworthy. They are friends when you feel alone. What is God like? That's a very big question. One that people from places all around the world throughout all of time have answered in many different ways. Keep searching, keep wondering, keep learning about God. And whenever you aren't sure what God is like, Think about what makes you feel safe, what makes you feel brave, and what makes you feel loved. That is what God is like. The end. We can't always know exactly what God is like because God is bigger than us. God is a mystery. But here and there, we get glimpses. We get little signs. And we get to hold on to those. And let our hearts be astonished. The scripture today is uh, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have domination over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon this earth. So God created mankind in his image, in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Our scripture today comes from 2 Corinthians. And you may be familiar with this. I'm assuming that you probably would if you've attended church for any length of time. This is a common scripture that is often shared with a congregation during stewardship drives when someone is encouraging you to be a cheerful giver. 
I want you to think today about all of the ways God is calling you to give yourself to, to God, to the community, to one another in this moment, in the next moment, right now. Listen for the word of God for you today. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when a giver delights in the giving. God can pour on blessing in an astonishing amount of ways so that you're ready for anything and for everything, more than just ready to do it. Do what needs to be done. As one psalmist put it, he throws caution to the wind, giving to the needy in reckless abandon. His right living, right giving ways never run out, never wear out. This most generous God, who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals, more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away, which grows into full-formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Carrying out this social relief work involves far more than helping meet the bare needs of the poor Christians. It also produces abundant and bountiful thanksgiving to God. This relief offering is a prod to live at your very best, showing your gratitude to God by being op openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offering to your needy brothers and sisters, your siblings, and really toward everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagance of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession for wherever you need. Thank God for this gift, his gift. No language can praise it enough. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me as you feel led and able. Most holy and gracious God, Please watch over the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts as we contemplate your word for us today. May we be blessed with new insights, startled with your abundant love, startled by your presence here with us. Speak to us, open our hearts and our imaginations that we might hear your word for us today. Amen. For in the beginning, God began to create and God said to God's very self, I choose not to do this alone. I want those with me, those created in my image, to be with me in this. And God said to the people, I give you dominion. I give you permission to build, to create, to terraform, to garden, to care for this world. What a gift. God, very God, saying to us, I want you with me in this. I want you to be a part of the ongoing creation. Right here, right now. What is your dream? What is your dream? How can we live into it? We hear throughout scripture these small bits which acknowledge we are in this with God. God is in this with us. For while so much of our scripture says, you know, we are dependent upon God, God chooses to wait on us for the fulfillment. Isn't that astonishing? God says, go Abraham, go Sarah, create a nation. He doesn't say, and this is exactly the steps I want you to take. He says, I want you to do this venture adventure. Imagine this great nation. He took them out under the stars and said, look up, look up and see how amazing and how wonderful. Imagine, dream it, become it. You will be a blessing to all the nations. 
all the gente is the word, all the gente, all the people of the world, all the ethne, all the ethnicities, all the people you will be a blessing to. But God doesn't always give us the details of how to do that. God says, participate. God says, lean into it. God says, imagine. Our theme for this week is recreate or recreate. And as, as I contemplated this image, this thought that we are asked, we are invited to participate in this, to have an imaginative heart, to have wild dreams and say, how can we build this together? How can we come together and do this? You and me, all of us together. Not just to take that deep moment to settle back and dream and play, to literally recreate, but to recreate. To every now and then wipe the slate clean and say, let's try again. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, spread that seed with abandon. Spread it like it, it's nothing. Just throw it out there. Just throw it out and see. And we hear this also in Jesus' parables, that the sower comes throwing the seeds on good soil and bad soil and all over the place. What will thrive will thrive. Some dreams will grow and some will be choked out, perhaps by bitter criticism. It's always a hard one for me, that bitter criticism and judgment. Perhaps they will be choked out by hunger and want and need and the need to work in some job which just takes all your energy and leaves you stretched so tight you don't have room or space to create. God says, I don't want that for you. Nonetheless, we throw those seeds, don't we? Nonetheless, we throw the seed to the left, to the right. We just keep tossing it. We don't know what is going to hit fertile soil or not, but do so cheerfully. Give of yourself. Give of your imagination. Give of your creativity. We are partners in this. We are members of the kingdom of God. This was a hard piece for me to write today as I contemplated God's call on us to creatively engage in this work. How many things have I given up from poetry to dancing to singing because it's just never quite good enough? Paul says, I don't care if you think it's good enough, do it. Paul says, throw caution to the wind. Give to the needy in reckless abandon. And the truth is we're all needy for this. We all need that, that gift of creativity, that gift of imagination throughout the last couple of years, we have soaked ourselves into movies and art and song and dance and painting and bread making and quilting and all the things. Because we could not go out, because we could not be distracted as much. We had to stay within, we had to isolate ourselves and we threw ourselves into art and creativity. Perhaps this is simply our birthright for when God began to create, God says, I don't want to do this alone. God said, hey, you, you in Baker City, create. You in Baker, imagine a big dream. Dream it, become it. For I want the kingdom of God to thrive there. We cannot tell you what your dream is. But I can tell you that God is longing to see you throw those seeds out there and be willing to just risk which one will grow and which one will not. For we do not know. We might wish we knew. We might wish we had a great idea of what could be. 
and we want it to look thus and so, and it may not be, it may not work. What comes from us, from this small church, this mighty, mighty church in the middle of Baker City will rise organically. A seed planted here or one there which takes root in perhaps five or six people, perhaps in three or four over there, and it will begin to grow. Do we have enough faith to throw our seeds around? What will take root? What will grow? Can we take that risk to let that be? Plant the future right now to plant it. We've all seen that cartoon, haven't we? Where some little guy is crouching on the numbers that spell out this new year. And behind him stands a friend who says, what do you think this new year will bring us? Each year they edit it to be a new year. What do you think 22, 2022 will bring us, he says. I'm afraid because you know 2021 was not good, 2020 was not good. And his friend down there digging in the surface, he says, it will bring us flowers. His friend says, how do you know it will bring us flowers? And he says, because I'm planting flowers. What seeds are we planting today? How are we engaging in this recreation, this regrowth, this revitalization, this stretching of ourselves into the future? Martin Luther was asked, what would you do if you knew the world was ending tomorrow? He said, I would plant an apple tree. A famous parable says that you understand the meaning of the world when you start to plant trees under which shade you will never sit, but you know that someone will. Your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, someone will sit in that shade. Someone will harvest that fruit. What seeds are we planting today? And are we doing it with a full heart? Are we doing it cheerfully? How do we give of ourselves? How do we step into the unknown? For if we scatter our seeds lavishly, throw them out there, some will fall on hard ground. Some will not be received. Some people will say, we, that was too much. You, you shouldn't do that. Some people will say, honey, you're off key. No, don't. Just, just sing quietly, okay? Some will say, oh, you thought you could write poetry, huh? You, you do have a day job, right? We will hear these things, that hard ground out there. It just simply won't take root. Our scripture says, throw the seed anyway. Throw it out there. Throw it with a cheerful heart. Once we throw that seed out there and we give it the chance to take root, it is no longer ours. How beautiful it is to see a congregation give rise to an offshoot which is not them, but which is of God and which is holy and beautiful. And yet so often we simply want to be who we are, recreate who we are. We want it to feel like us. God says, throw the seed. It may not look like you. Throw the seed, it may be different. Throw the seed, it may take root. Throw the seed. It may not live, but we plant anyway. I have at home in a drawer packets and packets of sunflower seeds because I want that beautiful hedge and I want those flowers that turn their faces to the sun and to one another when the sun is obscured, when it's behind a heavy cloud. 
I want that. And a friend was telling me, well, you know you can't plant things with sunflowers. They actually secrete a poison around them that prevents anything different from growing in their area. I'm gonna plant those seeds anyway. And I may plant other things with them anyway, for I do not know what will take root and will, what will not. I am out of control of that. I will plant those sunflowers and I will plant things around them and some will live and some will die and it is not in my hands. Who knows what makes a seed begin to crack open and take root? Not a one of us can make that happen. But we are called to scatter the seeds of our faith abundantly, to take risks, to recreate, to reimagine, to have those dreams and let them pull us out. Imagine that in that moment when we plant that seed or this one, or we tell a friend, you know you'd be welcome at church, you know you would. I know that sometimes you feel afraid that you would not be loved there, you would not be cared for there. You would be welcome. I would be with you. That that seed might be there for three months, four months, five. It might take time but it might at some point sprout a little visit. It might sprout a little glance, a little look. Throw those seeds out liberally. In the beginning, God began to create. God continues to create. God chooses not to do that alone, but calls us to be those who carry the word of the kingdom to others, to be those who embody and live out the kingdom of God. And God does not tell us, do it this way, do it that way, it has to look like this. God says, I wanna see what you can do. This, my dears, is improv. God is calling us to improv. Can you imagine? I think God does sometimes say, my dear, improv. Trust me. That is where we're called to be today. As we seek to live out this vibrant, full life, we're called to improv. We're called to throw the seeds out there. Some of it will not take root. And some of it will become a tree so large that many will take shelter in its branches Many will sit in the shade underneath and eat the fruit thereof. My friends, it cannot happen if we do not throw the seeds out there. God calls you to create. Amen. My friends, I don't usually give you a statement of faith from the Sarasota Statement. The Sarasota statement is one of those seeds our denomination and others have come together and thrown out there. It is a beautiful piece of work. We do not know if it will take root. Years and years ago when the Westminster statement was written, churches all over began to rename themselves Westminster Presbyterian because they so wanted to be associated with that. They were like, oh, it's good. This is who we are. Perhaps the Sarasota or the Belhar, perhaps some of these will begin to do the same. They will take root and they will change who we are. And I think the Sarasota was written in that dream that they would at least spark some beautiful conversations. I invite you to join me as you see it come across the screen. We, a small and imperfect reflection of the church, gather in heart, mind, and body to search for words to speak our faith convictions in our particular cultural context, the hope we proclaim, the ways we fall short, and the actions to which we commit ourselves. 
We are people of hope who confess Jesus Christ as Lord over a kingdom in which no one is hungry, violence is no more, and all suffering is gone. All sit together around a shared table. Wolves and lambs enjoy each other's company, and every tear is wiped from every eye. Our commitment is to acts that feed, clothe, instruct, reconcile, admonish, heal, and comfort, reflecting the power of God's hope, and as an eagerness to see the kingdom made manifest. <laughs>
nation, that we might love one another and love you. We are truly blessed to know that we need never face anything alone, that you are with us in good times and in bad, and that you have called us together to be one beautiful, loving community. May we have the grace to live in Invitation to the offering. As our offering plates remain in the narthex, let us take a moment to contemplate God's gracious calling and invitation to us to be co-creators, to the healers, to be reconcilers and peacemakers. come now to our time of prayer and usually we sit in the sanctuary and we take prayer requests from all who are here from those who write online today we're going to simply hold those in our heart please pray with me as you feel led and able most holy and gracious God you ask us to step forward in a world and put our precious dreams out there to open ourselves up to criticism and even ridicule, to find ourselves vulnerable because our love for you is so evident, is so clear, because our love for our neighbor puts us at risk of being seen. Give us the courage to do just that. As we come together today, we hold those people in our hearts who are struggling with illness. We think especially today of those who are battling COVID and flu and other such illness. We think of those who have had surgeries which have been postponed because the hospitals are overworked. We think of those who are going back and forth to the hospital for constant treatment. May they have strength, may they have endurance. Gracious God, you know the people that we are naming now, out loud or in our hearts. Those who are struggling with cancer, those who are struggling with life-changing illness, you know who they are. Be with them, give them courage. We ask for their restoration to full vitality. We ask for healing to happen. 
Gracious God, we know that you are with us in life and in death. Give us the courage to open ourselves up to that. Gracious God, we think of all of those who are struggling in systems that have become overburdened and weakened, whether there aren't enough nurses, there aren't enough doctors, there aren't enough care people, there aren't enough teachers and educators and janitors and all the places where we simply find ourselves stretched thin, worn hard, our hearts care-worn and tender, and the calling on our heart feeling like I just don't know if I can do this again or anymore. Please give us the courage, the strength of heart to live into this. For you know what it was to live in interesting times. You came and lived with your people as a member of an oppressed people a violated people and abused people, and you lived under the heel of Rome. You lived as a refugee among us. You suffered death. You suffered degradation. There is nothing that we might experience on this earth that you have not already been through with us. And so we pray the prayer that you taught us, praying together boldly, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Invitation to the offering. As our offering plates remain in the narthex, let us take a moment to contemplate God's gracious calling and invitation to us to be co-creators, to the healers, to be reconcilers and peacemakers. Thank you. 
felt he shook, <clears throat> that the nonsense might fall out, and that the old would pass away. Well, we can be bold in doing so, for we know who holds our hand as we journey. We know who surrounds us with love, and we know that there is nothing in heaven or on earth that can ever separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. We are eternally held, treasured, and loved. And my friends, if you're on social media, find those voices that aren't your own and listen.